Hello again viewers and greetings fellow space travelers. This is Thorn of Night and welcome to episode 9 of my Agrarian Skies Let's Play series. And today I am going to do a little bit of, uh, I guess, busy work. I need to actually start producing stuff that will make this smeltery farm useful. Uh, I need to start processing cobblestone and gravel and sand and dust and everything but first I need to be able to make those items so what I'm going to do is set up uh, four different arrays uh, using probably eventually pulverizers uh, one will be uh, to just process the cobblestone directly into gravel uh, I'm going to take half of the cobblestone and just store it because uh, I, I need to have a uh, back supply of cobblestone, but also I need to make the gravel. Uh, then I'm going to have half of that gravel get turned into sand, the other half into dust, and then I'm going to be running the gravel, the sand, and the dust through the sieve. Uh, I might actually take half the sand and turn it into glass, come to think of it. Uh, but what I first need to do is start producing more cobblestone and some power. So the first thing I need to do is get a bunch of porcelain clay and make several more of these things and go ahead and get them fired so I've got that going uh, the next thing I need to do is make a magma crucible or uh, not crucible uh, dynamo and let's see here hmm magmatic dynamo there we go and in order to do that I'm going to need some invar I thought for sure no I did I did make some magmatic dynamos al already I apologize I am a little hazy right now I have had uh, a tooth infection recently and uh, I have not been mentally operating at a hundred percent so if I ignore something or forget something I do apologize I will try to stay on top of stuff but that's good news I have the dynamos that's awesome so now I guess what I need to do is find a way to transport the power so let's see here uh, need some energy conduit and that just needs glass lead and redstone i do have some redstone somewhere i thought i had some redstone somewhere oh i know for sure oh there it is have i really used all the rest of it i guess i did wow so let's see here I can go ahead and make some of that oh that's right it won't work with that adjacent inventory lead redstone let's see how many of these I can make because I'm going to be needing a bunch of them anyway uh, put the glass in the, in the middle do this there we go that should be enough to last me at least a little while put that back all right now i let's see here hey they're done i also need to make some more nether racks so let's grab nine of these and i don't have a bucket on me am i not seeing the bucket there it is and let's grab some lava from there 
Uh, I can just punch a hole in this. Lava. Redstone. Netherrack. Excellent. So I'm going to get a bunch more of these and then figure out an area where I'm going to have the power of production down there and I'll be right back. All right. So I have gotten most of it set up here. I have the energy conduit, the magmatic dynamos, the fluid duct, and the crucibles. And the crucibles are filling nicely with the lava or with the stone from the igneous extruder here. And now it's time to see if this is actually going to do what I think it ought to do. Probably don't need all those, but it looks like they lit up. And they are filling with energy. Excellent. So the next thing I want to do here is also set the output of items to the bottom. And I am going to go ahead and pulverize some uh, cobblestone into gravel. But first, let's place that. Clear all this, set it to input from the top, and output to the bottom, and I'll go grab a chest, or a couple chests, and yes, I know it's not pulverizing yet, I need to hook up the power, but first I need to give the items a place to go. That'll do. And you can go there. And that's not quite going to work. I want to be able to access it. So. Don't go in the fire. All right. So let's set this to output there. Can access it. All right. That's already full. And this is working on filling its way back up. And it's actually gaining some, even though these are running. Oh, well, they're done running now. Wow. All right. So let's hook. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Let's hook that up to there. It's getting juice. It's pulverizing. All right. <sighs> so now I need to set up. Oops. Some of this down there so I can start getting some uh, more materials because I need to uh, start getting a little bit more iron, but I first, before I do that, I need to accumulate a little bit more redstone because I've pretty much gone through all the redstone and I'm going to need some for some of the uh, projects that I need to uh, do to continue this part here. So I'm going to let this run for a while and then I'm going to get some more redstone by running it through the setup I already have in the house and then we will see what I need to do from there. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I am still grinding away at the gravel to get some uh, dust, but, uh, where am I going? 
there is one thing I wanted to see if I could get it figured out. I've never actually really used one of these harvesters before. And obviously I'm going to need to in order to get a bucket of sludge, apparently. So I'm going to set up a small little farm. Uh, but the farm that I'm going to do is going to require a bucket of witch water uh, to make. And I believe a piece of dirt. Let's just see here. Yes, tainted soil. I need tainted soil and blood saplings. And I'm going to come down here. I have very stressfully made a little platform. And I have run some power down because I'm going to set up a just the harvester not the planter uh, just a harvester to put these uh, or to harvest the blood saplings now if memory serves correctly the uh, trees will grow if for instance if it was planted in this corner it will occupy a two by two area in this direction it grows to the southeast uh, so what I'm going to have to do is set up this guy here and I'll let this grow Actually, I'm going to go ahead and bone meal it just to make sure. Because uh, I don't want it to be set up wrong. Bone meal. If 13 isn't enough, then I don't know what is. And these blood saplings grow upside down. There we go. And as you can see, it grew to the southeast. It grew in that direction from being planted in that direction. And what it did is it planted this, or, or it grew this gigantic upside down red tree. Now, this upside down gigantic red tree is useful for something. That is, uh, if I can, let's see here. Put that there. Zoom this. Put this behind it. So it should be facing that way. I hope. <sighs> no. Okay. So I'll point it this way there we go the grate on the front is the harvester part now what I'm going to have to do is run some power down to it and I need to put a chest next to it but what it does is it harvests everything in the area of the tree that it finds And it takes a while to harvest one of these. But the important thing here is when it harvests these trees, not only does it get wood, fire resistant wood specifically, uh, but it also gives redstone and plenty excess saplings to continue growing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is have an autonomous activator uh, probably on the other side of this block planting the saplings underneath uh, let's see here there by right clicking and then I'm just going to let it grow whenever it, it grows I'm not going to 
uh, accelerate the growth or anything like that. It's just going to be whenever. And uh, basically, I'll be able to generate a little bit more redstone than by processing just the uh, dust alone. So that that's the objective here. But now I have got some sludge. And I need to figure out how to output the sludge. I would suspect that I can plop a tank next to it. But I'm not sure. Uh, why did I do that? So let's grab a tank. And let's just see. Ah, let me in. Okay, that worked. Sludge. So let's get a bucket of sludge and finally turn in that quest. Which, of course, this was my ulterior motive here. Aside from getting the redstone. Uh, w uh, was it in here? Sludge? Manual submit. Oh, no. Uh, do I have at least some iron blocks still? Yes. Good. Because I'm otherwise out of iron and... Uh, that looks like it won't give me my bucket back. Okay, so let's submit this and claim some ender lily seeds. Yay! All right. And get out of here. And what's next? Expanding the farms. Sedgen sledgehammer upgrade. Okay, so that's... I'm going to have to deal with the harvesters and whatnot first uh, so the next thing was I is it lava I think it's lava so let's get a bucket and and this was oh I don't need to go down here yet this was one of the main things that I wanted to or main side things that I wanted to take care of in this episode was getting these ender lily seeds. So let's make a bucket like so. And glowstone, let's get uh, how I have five ender lily seeds. So let's just go ahead and grab eight glowstone because I believe this guy has eight lava in it. And then, let's just go ahead and grab this. Plop it down. And then, here we go. Lava, glowstone, and stone. Oops. And almost. There we go. So now I can, where do I want to put these? You know what? I'll put them downstairs. Just for now. I can go right here. Ender lily seeds. All right, now these things are awesome because they will grow ender pearls slowly and uh, much more slowly if you put them on dirt, dirt rather than end stone, which is why I wanted to make the end stone. A couple things to keep in mind. Uh, you can get more seeds uh, out of breaking a plant uh, than just one. So 
Uh, that's why I went ahead and made more because eventually I will start getting more of these ender lily seeds and start being able to produce more ender lilies. Another thing to keep in mind is above a certain growth, uh, it will deal damage to you or any mobs uh, that walk over it. When it's still a young plant, it will not. But uh, I now have ender pearl production and I don't have to have the mob farm uh, dark and, and have to attack things with my sharpness 5 saddle and, and hope to get an enderman. So that is awesome. But uh, what I need to do now is figure out the arrangement for getting this to be automated and uh, I will have some redstone production. But in the meantime, I'll be right back. All right, because I just can't sit still on letting things happen, and because I still have something else to do as part of my goal for this episode, especially didn't, since I didn't get to it the previous one, I need to work on the Squid Ranch. Uh, and the objective here is to get, I don't know, I guess about a chest worth of ink sacks, I can always make another squid spawn egg in the future, but for right now, I just want to get some ink sacks so that I have a, a stock of them in case I need them for something. And also, it's good to uh, go ahead and get this rancher made. And the way this works is I do this and that. I get this thing called a rancher. And... I am fairly certain I haven't made one before. I just had the thought that I already make one. No. Okay, good. So, what I'm going to do is come down here and place the rancher down somewhere. Here looks good. Yes, here looks very good. And then I'll do that. And then this. And then I'll run some power to it. Like, oops, like so. That should automatically have gotten power. Excellent. All right, put some water in there. Get out the squid egg, and there we go. A squid. And it isn't turning red, so it looks like it's going to be okay. Uh, so what this is going to do, it's already started doing it, is slowly it will just milk ink sacs out of the squid. And I'm just going to let it run for a bit. Uh, but I'm glad I got that taken care of because... It's it's done. I have a rancher built. I can use it later for other things. Mission accomplished. Uh, I did want to test this real quick. I think 57% is where it starts hurting. Yep, that hurt. This one does not. This one does. Uh, so be careful. They do hurt. Anyway, I am going to uh, cut here. See how much... Uh, time is left in the episode and see what else I want to take care of uh, and determine whether I want to uh, hold off on my projects for the next episode. So I'll be right back. Alright, so as it turns out, it is pretty close to time for me to go ahead and wrap things up. But there is one last thing I wanted to do and that is going to involve smelting some cobblestone in here that's almost done uh i need to have just a few more of uh these scorched bricks and then i can have everything that's needed in order to turn in that next quest in that one chain uh so i'm going to go ahead and make these scorched bricks and when i get back i'll finish up this quest and then go ahead and wrap up so I'll be right back. All right, here we go. Last two things that I need to make for this quest. The scorched duct 
and the scorched drain. All right. So let's move this down here. There we go. All four of those. And I am probably going to require one of these furnace things. So I'm going to go with the scorched bricks. I don't know if the graveyard soil is going to be useful for anything in the uh, rest of the challenge or not. So scorched bricks it is. Yay! All right. First off, let's see what's next. Okay. Steel armor. That's easy enough. And a deep tank. A deep tank controller. Okay. Well, let's see what's in this bag. And then it will be time to wrap up. Not so good. R oh. Let's put this with the collection of red herrings. Right there. That's just horrible. I, oh. oh well. That's the way it goes. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up here. So thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please feel free to leave a message in the uh, comment section below. I will do my best to get back to you as quick as I can. Uh, if you like this video and you like what I'm doing here, please feel free to give a like. I do appreciate that. And if you haven't already, ooh, go ahead and subscribe so you know when my future stuff comes out. But it is definitely time for me to go. So thank you once again for watching. This is Thorn of Night, and I will talk to you later.